Hello friends, today we are going to study about peptide bond. So what is a peptide bond? It is a bond that connects to amino acid. And how it connects to amino acid? The carboxyl terminal of one amino acid is connected to the amino terminal of another amino acid. And the bond which connects these two terminals is a peptide bond. Now from this structure, what we can see is it is a planar molecule. The oxygen of the carboxyl terminal and the hydrogen of the amino terminal are present in opposite direction. So this is a trans conformation. Now what happens is this is structure A, this structure B and structure C. The peptide bond in the structure A is a single bond. Now because oxygen is more electronegative, it pull the shared pair of electron towards itself due to which it gains partial negative charge and nitrogen gains partial positive charge. And due to this, there occurs delocalization of electron pairs. So what happens is the electron shift and because of this delocalization of electron or shifting of electron, the peptide bond gains a double bond nature as you can see in the figure C. So peptide bond, though it is a single bond, but it has a partial double bond character because of delocalization of electron pair. And because of this delocalization of electron pair, this type of uh, arrangement is known as a resonance stabilized arrangement. It is a resonance stabilization. So because of this, the peptide bond is more rigid because of its double bond character and it gives more strength to the peptide backbone. So though the peptide bond is a single bond but it gains partial double bond character due to delocalization of electron pair of nitrogen. Now we already studied in the covalent bond video that we have single bond and we have double bond. If we see the bond length the single bond will have a more bond length or the double bond will have a more bond length? Definitely the single bond. The bond length of single bond is more compared to the bond length in case of double bond because single bond involve s orbital and double bond involve s and p orbital. Now in the structure A the C and N that is the peptide bond is a single bond. Figure C the peptide bond is a double bond. So that means in case of peptide bond, the CN bond length is less compared to the normal CN bond. Whereas in the figure A, there is a double bond between C double bond O, carboxyl carbon and oxygen. But in structure C, the oxygen and carbon is connected with single bond. That means in case of peptide bond, the CO bond length is little longer compared to the CO bond length in case of aldehyde or keto. Now this is only written here. What it is written? In case of peptide bond, the CN is shorter compared to the normal CN bond length. And why it is so? Because it gains partial double bond character. Whereas C double bond O is slightly longer than the normal aldehyde and ketone. Why? Because in case of peptide bond, because the peptide bond gain double bond character, the CO becomes single bond. So single bond is longer than the double bond. The structure is rigid and planar. It has a 40% double bond character. It is a trans conformation because the oxygen and the hydrogen attached with the nitrogen, they are in opposite direction. But 10% of proline residues follow the cis peptide bond. That means CO and NH on the same side. So peptide bond is a bond that connects to amino acid which has a partial double bond character. Now this structure is a peptide bond structure only but here various angles and bond lengths are written. What is more important is the angle formed due to rotation of C and C alpha and this is known as psi and next important is the angle formed due to rotation around N and C alpha and this is denoted by pi and these angles are known as torsion angles or dihedral angles. So because the peptide bond has a partial double bond character due to which it cannot rotate freely in all the direction with all the angles. 
so all the angles are not allowed so it is not like that that any amino acid can take any angle it is not possible because of steric hindrance also different amino acid has different r group so depending upon the r group how much bulky that amino acid is what is the structure of that amino acid it cause steric hindrance and also because of this double bond character it cannot rotate freely so it is not like that that all the amino acid can take any angle that is not allowed so what is allowed is given by ramchandran in the ramchandran plot so what we have to remember from here is all the blue shades are the allowed conformations rest all the positions are not allowed now in blue shades also here it is written this position is for right handed alpha helix this position is for anti parallel beta sheets this is for parallel beta sheets this is for collagen this is for right twisted beta sheets and this is for left handed alpha helix so only these positions for these structures are allowed rest all positions are not allowed if we compare all the amino acids then we can find that glycine is the amino acid that covers the larger area in ramchandran plot why because if you remember the structure of glycine it is h for r group and the proline is the most restricted amino acid so these two are the exception that is glycine covers major area and proline cover the least area for rest only you have to remember what are the quadrant where these structures are allowed so this is about peptide bond now one question from my end for you all that is which amino acids causes a maximum of steric hindrance do let me know in the comment section if you found the video informative please do like share and subscribe and hit the bell icon for the next video notification till then stay safe stay happy